Hello and welcome to Henson's Flying Machines covering and finishing video. Today we're going to look at how to finish your model, how to sand off any edges, how to apply the tissue covering and how to tighten it. Henson's Flying Machines uses special acid free tissue paper which doesn't require dough to get a good finishing. The only material you'll need is PVA glue and water which can be found at any hobby shop. For the rest of the finishing you will need a sharp Stanley knife or scalpel, a craft knife, a file or sandpaper, a wide beam brush for applying PVA glue, PVA glue, the tissue covering that comes with it, stickers that come with it, and also if you want to paint any of it, you can as well. Some people like to use scissors for cutting the tissue paper. I'm going to use a sharp craft knife. Finishing your model depends very much on what use you're going to have for the model as a final piece. Whether you want it as a display piece or a free flight piece will affect how it eventually goes together. Lots of people like to leave their models uncovered simply for display, which is fine as well. If you are covering your model, it makes sense not to attach pieces like the landing gear, upper details and tail planes until you've already covered those sections. Start by trimming away any excess balsa wood on your model which will have a sharp edge. As you can see this wing edge here will come into contact with the tissue as it folds over the edge there. Some people also like to remove the burn lines from the laser cut, others like to keep them in place so that it shows through the tissue paper and adds more interesting detail to the model. I'm going to leave some of them, which is along the wing ribs, and then get rid of some of them, which is along the tail area here. I'm going to very lightly, supporting the model, just sand away some of the burn marks, which will also help these cross sections to sit flush. Be very careful when sanding against the grain, as it might snap the balsa. Any edges, such as this here, you can just slightly sand the edge away if you want a rounded look to it. As the Iron Decker, which I'm doing here, has quite a square side, I'm going to leave it to it. However, I am going to just plane away part of the tail section there so it is more aerodynamic. You can of course use sandpaper for this instead, but just be aware of the flex involved in sandpaper and that it can bend and contour and not give you a perfectly reliable line. You can see the difference on these two wings here. One that has been smoothed around the way is more aerodynamic, whereas this one I haven't done yet is a flat ended finish and will create a lot more drag in the wind. Now, with the nacelle and the rounded nature of the Eindecker, I've already begun sanding away some of the laser cut parts to give it a nice rounded front there. I'm going to continue with that. Smoothing everything down into one very rounded cowling piece there. You don't need very much pressure at all with this. Just gently sand it away. Test with the finger to make sure it's smooth. Blow away any excess. <laughs> As you can see here, I have sanded semi-round the front here and some of the cowling detail, as well as rounded off the wing leading edges and taken off some of the laser burn on the tail. I've also just slightly rounded the back of the cockpit here for the effect. I'm going to paint the front of the cowling and we'll go into that later. Um, we will do it in black and then silver with some dry brushing technique. I also will add some little details into the cockpit there. The next step is going to be to cover it with the tissue paper supplied in the kit. Now to make these kits a little bit easier 
The tissue supplied is a special acid reactive tissue for which you don't need dope. A simple PVA 50-50 mix will work as a tightening agent. Um, standard PVA like wood glue is what we're going to use to attach it to the frame first. The other option for attaching it to the frame is to use a little stationary glue stick. Um, in this case what I'm going to do is just get an idea of the rough size of the wing and I'm going to do double the size of that wing there and I'm going to cut out a section of the tissue which I'm going to use to cover both wings. You can use scissors, I just particularly like using a sharp craft knife. Now make sure that your surface is clean from all of the sandings before you start. <coughs> First thing you're going to do is using a wide brush coat the underside of the wing in your PVA wood glue all the way up to the seams all of the major flat areas like so, getting a nice liberal wash across it and then across the wing ribs as well so that it will glue down to the wing ribs and when you tighten it with your PVA mix later the wing ribs will stand proud. Just get a little bit on the leading edge as well and we're going to cover from the trailing edge forward. So now we're going to lay very carefully our tissue on the inside there, making sure that the entire wing is covered. Like so. Don't worry if it is a little bulged, because you are going to trim and then tighten this with the PVA. As you can see here on the wing tip, it is slightly bent. What you're going to do is just use your sharp knife and just part away the tissue covering there. Press it down into any holes and then you're ready to turn it over make sure there's no creases in it. Now repeat the process on the other side covering all the areas where you believe it's going to come into contact with the tissue along that mainstay, along the trailing edge Feel free to be quite liberal with it, but obviously try not to get it on the tissue that you've already put on the underside of the wing. Make sure that all of the ribs are covered. Then very carefully, holding it tight along the leading edge, taking out any creases fold the tissue over, pulling it down tight across the wing and then patting it down onto the trailing edge of the wing so that it comes into contact with the PVA there and at the edges. You want it fairly accurate but it doesn't have to be too tight of a fit, you don't have to pull it. Make sure that the trailing edge is smart and then Set that to one side for a minute, let the entire thing dry and repeat the process on the other wing and then we'll look at trimming away and applying tightening to it. While your wings are drying you can move on to some other sections of the model so long as they're not too close like the tail here. What I've done is I've cut out the outline of the tail very roughly and I'm going to very simply apply PVA to the entire tail unit as one piece. Um, remember if this were a model with tail flaps and movable parts then you're going to want to separate them and cover them separately before doing any more detail on it as you're going to want them to move. But in this case the iron deck has a one piece tail and we're just going for free flight so I liberally paint it with the PVA and then very tightly making use of that leading edge 
just lay that over there. You'll notice that I have left a millimetre along the front. Now the reason for this is I'm going to paint the leading edge of tail plane with some PVA and then just carefully fold over that spare millimetre just so that it colours in the front of the tail plane. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. To make it easier to uh, cover I've removed the iron decker's tail and although I am going to cover it using the sticker provided in the kit which I'm going to cut out once I put it on I'm also going to cover it in the yellow tissue. Again I'm just going to use the same method I'm going to paint the entire thing using the PVA making sure to go all the way up to the edges and I'm going to do both sides in this case now, as you can see here I have a cutout of the yellow tissue I'm going to put it down fold over the yellow tissue and just speed the process up by covering both sides at once which will also make it quite easy to trim as well as this is just going to be a backing paper. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry, slightly elevated, like so. Having allowed the tissue to dry and the glue to set the whole way around, it's time to start trimming away some of the excess paper. For that you're going to want to use a very sharp scalpel or Stanley knife and just holding the paper tight very gently run along the very edge of the paper making sure not to pull it away from the wood just very gently parting one sheet at a time and following any contours all the way around Repeat that on both sides. Let the blade do the work and just cut away the excess. Be aware if you haven't let it dry properly, it can rip the tissue paper away from the wood and will leave a jagged, unfinished edge. Any areas where you have a slight overhang, you can of course, just using a little bit of PVA, glue it back down over the edge of the tissue. <coughs> like so, as you can see here, this wing tip has slightly come away. So I'm gonna add a little bit more tissue, a uh, little bit more glue on that. And then just using my finger, make sure that I've got a nice, bond and a flash finish all the way along. There we go, that's the first wing. I'll now do the other wing and the tail plane in the same way. As you can see we've now trimmed away all of the sections we've applied and just tidied up the edges by gluing them down with a little bit of PVA glue. Now I'm going to start on the fuselage. I have cut a piece to size ready to fit over there. As you can see I've left a lot of overhang on each side and I'm going to cover it all the way up to the rear of the cockpit here and allow the rear of the cockpit to just fan down there. So what I'm going to do with the PVA glue is I'm going to quite liberally paint everywhere that the tissue is going to touch. Now with the PVA it will only stick the tissue where you put PVA. So if you want to use a finer brush, and then that will help you to dictate exactly where your tissue is going to stick to. So that's that section covered. Now make sure to get it positioned correctly before you actually touch it down. 
So starting in the most sensitive section, which is here at the tail, and I'm going to run it forward just by finger pressing it down and over this profile here, just adjust the shape a little bit. It's very difficult to move once it's already wet, so make sure you're happy with it. The first point, like so. And again, you're going to let that dry and you can move on to the underside of the tail now. And then once the top and bottom of the fuselage are dry, you can start on the side sections as well. While the tail section is drying, I'm going to start on the wheels, which I want to also cover in the same yellow tissue. So I'm just going to paint the entire surface and I've cut out some small squares which totally cover the wheel. I'm just going to lay it over the top, pat it down firm, and then once that's done, I'll be able to just trim around the edges and if needed, paint some tires on. I'll do the same with the posing wheel. Let's get a nice good covering on it all the way around. Try and keep the edges clear if you can. And then just flat lay your piece over it, touching it down smooth. Let that dry. Turn the model over, I am going to start covering the underneath of the fuselage here. Now I've cut a section that's slightly longer because I don't want to remove the landing gear, so I'm going to trim it as I fit it. So I'm going to press that down into there, like so, and then just around the bottom of the landing strut, I'm going to make some small incisions and cut away. Here. so that that will fold around there when I want it to. Make sure that everything's still aligned and then on the other side just repeat the same. It is of course much easier if you've got the landing gear off at this stage. do come to glue, I'm going to align everything up and then those will press through. Like so. When you want to, to shoot, always do it on the 2D profiles. That way you can cover the other side separately and cover any mistakes with a little bit of overlapping. So with that in place, I am I'm going to start by putting some PVA on the center of the piece just to hold it in place so that when I do come to doing the front it'll be that much easier held down. Now, I'm not going to start gluing until I'm confident that that front is right and I'm just going to pat it down in place. Now that that's held right I'm going to slightly lift these pieces here, then paint underneath, painting only the places that I actually want the tissue to stick to. Anything that the PVA touches will be tissued, so be very careful not to get the landing gear in unless you're actually tissuing the landing gear. So then gently folding that in. So, trimming away. The parts that I don't actually want covering. And once the tissue is wet, it is very delicate and can be pulled apart. So flatten it down where you want it, leave it to dry before trimming away any of the tissue. Now, moving towards the back of the aircraft, 
Most aircraft have either a tail skid like this one or a landing wheel. So with the tissue in place patted down, I'm going to make a small incision just along the landing skid here, just to mark it for me. Then I know that the tissue is going to part around it and I can glue it back down on either side. Now gluing along the bottom of the fuselage and around the tail skid without actually touching the tail skid itself. Then I can pull the tissue down around the tail skid, pulling it tight like so. I'm going to leave that to dry and when we come back we will trim it and then repaint it. With sections like the tail here, when you are cutting away the excess tissueing, be sure to use a good angle and a very sharp clean new blade. Just trace around each individual piece, slowly cutting away the tissue and following the profiles as carefully as possible. That is the completed tail section and of course for edges you can just add a little bit of PVA just to make sure that it's sticking down. On this particular tail it doesn't matter because we're going to cover it with a sticker. But I just wanted to demonstrate the process for some of the aircraft that I have an uncovered tail and as you can see the tissue begins to fill in the spaces there while still leaving the designs out. Just let that dry before you do any sticker. Having let the top section of the fuselage dry I'm now ready to trim it away. Um, you'll notice that I've changed my blade for a new sharp one. Um, blades do dull especially when cutting through PVA and tissue mix. And now I'm going to very gently cut away where I don't want the tissue anymore, which is the inside of the cockpit there. Following this contour down. Now, in this particular model, I'm going to paint the front of the cockpit black as per the original Iron Decker. So I'm going to remove all of that tissue covering to expose it. Now I'm going to very carefully trim down the side of the fuselage, almost allowing the blade to do the work to fall through the tissue, keeping along that contour there, and just very gently easing it away, all the way down to the tail section. And just trimming it along there. If you miss any parts with the knife, make sure you don't try and pull them away because that will simply cause the tissue to rip in any damp spots and damage your covering. This is one of those things that gets better with practice and the proper technique, the right angle, a little bit of sawing motion. come to you the more and more you do it. Don't be afraid to make a few mistakes. You've got plenty of tissue with each of the kit and it's not a worry if you want to peel it off. Start again. Just make sure everything's dry before you do. As you can see there, it's attached to the rear of the cockpit all the way along the sides and to the cross bars. So when I do paint the entire thing, it will take the shape from there and then tighten up against it. And turn it over, do exactly the same underneath. And I'm just letting the blade do the actual work. Trimming back and trimming off the excess here 
but I've gone around the landing gear. There we go, and that's clear. I'm just going to go in here and trim slightly here. Now you're always uh, on the side of extra rather than having too little and don't be too tempted to cut anything that is still slightly wet as it will just pull and then spider as you can see here the tissue is covering that bit of landing gear but as I haven't got any glue on it I can simply use the blade against the wood and then just lift it away. Now I'm going to leave the engine compartment open here. You can of course fold it down behind the engine. But I want a little bit of exposed area to later fit my motor. So I'm going to trim it clear like so. Still a little bit wet here so I'm going to let it dry a little bit better just before I do any more trimming there. The next step on this particular model is to do the sides of the fuselage. Now I'm going to cut a piece that I know is going to fit the full length, like so. Now I'm going to start from the tail and then I'm going to part it around the wing here and do the underside of the wing and the top of the wing separately. One way to do this is to roughly measure it first. We know that top edge is fairly straight and from there I'm going to put a small incision just in here to mark where the paper is going to part around the wing. This can be quite fiddly. And there. Yep. Now that my wing surface is going to come in there, so I'm going to trim along that edge there. Then covering the side of the fuselage with the PVA glue ready to stick. I'm only going to go up to the spot just behind where this bend is here. Just make sure any excess PVA is just taken away like that and you want to glue everywhere that you want to stick and not glue anywhere you don't want to stick. Now, I'm going to align this now, starting from the tail, running forward to that edge there and just pat it down nice and smooth and I can see that's going to go around there, pull it slightly. Like so. And then as you can see with this front here, I do not want to cover this in tissue paper. So I am not going to paint with the PVA glue. I'm going to paint everywhere that I want it to stick to and ignore anywhere that I don't because that will make it much easier to trim it away. And then I'm just going to run that part down there. You'll also see I've left a tiny amount of excess there just to butt up to the wing. That'll give me a nice edge there. And you can manipulate it slightly using your fingers when it's wet but be very careful. And here on the top of the wing is going to trim that part away there and with the excess piece I know is going to fit I'm going to paint where I want it to cover here all along that area and then just with that top edge guiding me I'm going to put it on like so And then just covered the very first part of the wing there and any 
covering there and using a tiny amount of PVA water mixture just paint along that joint like so this piece here I'm going to trim away when it's dry so I'm going to leave it as it is for now while we're waiting for the fuselage covering to dry I'm just going to trim the excess around the wheels just literally letting the contour guide all the way around keeping the tissue taut as we go rotating and trimming now, it's very easy to end up with a rough edge on these wheels so if you want to go back with your PVA and just tidy it up it's absolutely fine another option once it's dry is to color in where the tires would be or the hub with a little sharpie or black permanent marker just to add in a little bit of detail yeah. Yeah, just that little bit around the edge just to kind of pat down and seal that edge like so once the sides of your fuselage are dry you want to start trimming away the excess here again if you need a sharper blade change it at this point here I'm just cutting away on the detail where I am going to paint rather than cover a little soaring motion just to take it away you can press against the bolster but be careful not to lose any of the strength by cutting too deeply and on the underneath here you'll see more clearly the trimming carefully peel it away and trim back now you'll see it's not pulled it has pulled slightly away I'm just going to pat it down flush and just add a tiny amount of PVA into the crease there just to allow that to seal properly and now I'm going to trim away underneath the landing gear in line with the contours just with a very sharp blade and just either letting the blade do the work or just sawing ever so slightly then where it covers the bolsa there. It's going to go a little bit deeper to cut through. And again, just peel that away. And on the nose section, carefully trimming it back. And then to get the sharp edge, go to go along with the blade down and trim that back respectfully. And again against the bolsa here on the landing strap, so that, that section will peel away. Note I'm holding down the tissue covering that's applied just so it doesn't have any stress against it. As you can see here, it's slightly overlapped onto the landing gear, so I'm just going to pull that away, and carefully peel it back, and continue down the length of the fuselage, very carefully trimming it. Now you want to make sure when you're going around an angle like this, where you've already covered one half, you don't slide your blade accidentally through the tissue of the previously covered sections. Now, as you can see here with the top of the wing, there is some excess tissue here, so I'm going to pull that taut and then just trim it. 
almost feathering it. And then I'm going to get a little bit of my PVA glue and just along the edges, just add a little bit extra reinforcement, especially here where you have the tissue on tissue. And you can just pat it down, get a nice smooth corner going. Just like so. Right, with all of the sections of the aircraft that you want covered in tissue, covered in tissue, we are now going to paint the entire aircraft with a 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water. This will cause the non-acidic tissue to tension across. 50-50 um, may be a bit strong. Um, that's for a lighter mix with many coats. In this case, I'm using about 75-25 stronger on the PVA and a wide soft brush and I'm just going to start by painting the whole model very gently, quite liberally with the mixture being very careful not to pull it anywhere or to pull at the tissue paper as it is extremely delicate when wet now, areas such as these are going to get super delicate, super fragile and if you try and apply a second coat before it's totally dry it's going to go very wrong. Just make sure that any areas that need to be tightened are well covered. It will also make the paper a little more translucent as well as it dries but if you did want the model without the laser cut lines that you can see here. It's easy to sand them off before you start. I quite like the detail so I'm leaving it in. There we go. Now try and avoid going over areas that you've already applied to. If you have to, you have to, but be very gentle. And get a nice covering on absolutely all of the sections. If you don't paint a certain section, then it will show a slightly different coloration. The broad sweeping strokes go with the brush, avoiding poking it or putting any extra pressure on the model. And the nice thing about this is you can see a lot of the detail of the framework and the skeleton inside of the machine. And there. Now you can put as many coats on as you like, but make sure that every coat is completely dry before you try and apply the next coat. There you go. Now that's going to need to be left to completely dry until you can put another coat on or continue with the detailing. Right, while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to lay it to one side, um, preferably somewhere warm, out of the way, and I'm going to do a few little detail parts on the dry parts. The tail itself, uh, in this model it comes with a sticker that covers the entire thing. Um, the stickers normally are cut out and then stick. In this case, these are pre-cut with the Iron Decker. So I'm going to lift out the tail section, just bringing out one end of it. Like so now these are self adhesive stickers, much easier to work with than water slide transfers. And laying that down, I'm going to apply it to the tail. I want to make sure that the cross is upright. So I'm going to position it directly over there and then lay it down firmly on top like so and now using my very sharp knife I'm going to trim around the excess. Just bring that off. But these are generic stickers for a number of different World War I aircraft. So I can lay it down and just very carefully cut around that profile. 
revealing the Iron Decker tail shape. Be very careful not to damage the actual shape of the wood underneath. You can of course use scissors for this, trace around it and cut it first. that you don't have any jagged edges because that will show up like so now I'll repeat that on the other side but for now I'm going to have a look at the wheels now which are totally dry and covered with the yellow tissue um, for the look I'm going to use a permanent marker and I'm just going to literally draw on the tire edges like so Going around the profile. Again, this has to be done when it's totally dry, or you will get some bleed running across. That just gives you a little extra detail there. You can, of course, go on the inside, design in the hub, or make yourself a thicker tire. I'm going to leave that just like that. If you are going to paint sections of your airplane, um, you can use watercolor, but first you're going to need to seal the balsa using your PVA and water mixture, the same as you've used for the wing covering. Just paint those sections in thickly with balsa, just to stop your paint going into the balsa and running. Give it a nice liberal covering. One coat should do of slightly thicker PVA. Just make sure you get it in all the creases around where you're going to paint. And then that should prepare a good surface for you actually to paint on. I'm going to paint the cowling of this black. And then we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing on it with some silver. I'm also going to give the tail skid just a little bit of PVA covering just to add some strength into it. And also on the undercarriage. Remember with the undercarriage here, when you're actually building it, you can seal it and give it a bit more strength by running either super glue or PVA glue along the edges just to seal in the balsa. Let the whole thing dry. Right, as you can see, it's about 30 minutes later and the tissueing is now all dry. It's all tightened up all over the model, following the stretch line profiles uh, behind the cockpit there, underneath, and on the wing contours. That is only one coat. You can, of course, put another coat on now, which will take out any extra wrinkles and tighten the entire aircraft up just a little bit more. Of course, you are adding weight every time you do it. Um, I'm going to leave it at one coat for now. And I am going to just paint in some of the details I want, which is the cowling and around the cockpit and such. For that, I'm going to use any black acrylic, really. Um, in this case, it's a Citadel black, but I also quite like to use these cheap little essential acrylics. Now, don't water down your paint too much, but get a nice covering for it. And then just paint onto the areas you want to paint. And this is only going to be a, a base coat in this case. As you can see, where the super glue has gone onto the bolster, I'm going to have to paint that in a thick solid black which means that the entire base I'm painting is going to have to be that thick solid black I'm using quite a coarse brush but you can if you want to put in detail put a very fine brush on there
to make sure to get a nice solid colour if you want that effect. More for that in. And along the edges if you want. You can also, of course, just use a permanent marker just to do the edges to neaten up and tidy. And fill the crevices. When you have layers of wood here that you sanded flat, just make sure that you're going to all of the cracks there and filling into the paintwork. Because if you're going to dry brush over the top of it, the part that will give you the contrasting relief is, of course, in the gap inside. Now I'm also going to paint the inside here and the engine detail because I'm going to put a little bit of silver on there and I'd like it to contrast really strongly. So the black filling in there is going to let that colour really just pop. Now of course it's <clears throat> entirely your model so you can do any details you want any colors you want there's no set rules I'm just doing in particular what was intended for this model and what I think looks quite good now the cockpit interior normally would have been brown wood detail most of it I'm going to leave like that but some of it I am going to just emphasize a little bit in black, which is that small rear section. Just here, because I think it finishes off that look. Now, when you are painting next to tissue, use fairly dry paint, because otherwise the bleed will show through into the tissue. And just to finish off the edges of the cockpit and that rounds out the cockpit area I could then paint brown inside there or if I wanted to even draw on some little instruments onto the instrument panel and just let that all dry satisfactory once it is drying make sure that you've got good coverage of any areas that have super glue on it as sometimes it's going to come a little bit astray let that dry and just check it afterwards. Um, to add a little more detail, I am going to dry brush over the black. Now, dry brushing is a technique of applying another layer of paint over the top. Um, very dry paint, just to bring out some of the details. Uh, in this case, I'm using silver. I'm going to get some silver and I am going to basically almost dry it on some paper and then using a semi dry brush. I'm just going to go over, bring out some of the detail on the actual balsa with the silver. As you can see on the engine here, I'll bring in those silver shapes flip back and forth and the paint will stick to any outside edge more than it will to any crevice give it a more weathered well used look also gives a more authentic metalized effect so now I'm not going to overdo it too much. I'm just going to leave it like so. Give it a very metalized burnish look. A little bit extra around the nose there just to highlight it a little bit. And leave that as is. Time to put some of the detail back on. The uh, machine gun to the top, I've painted black. And I'm going to glue it back in place now. as it sits 
like so. <clears throat> and I can refit the tail unit just here. again and standing on its nose so that it doesn't come into contact with the very delicate machine gun support on the front just going to press that wheel in and hold that to dry for a little bit each model comes with a sheet of stickers now the stickers on most of the models you will cut around to the shape you want. In this case of the Eindecker they're pre-cut. It's going to lift them away. Now you can cut out the Maltese crosses on these. Um, I like the big white background to them. Uh, they are self-adhesive so you need to position them exactly where you want them before fitting them. I'm going to use the wing ribs as a guide and just press it down there and you're happy with it and the same on the opposing side using the same wing rib as a guide looking for the same kind of height as well right. so now all of the stickers uh, can be arranged as you want if you're trying to recreate a particular aircraft or a particular style or doing whatever you feel really. I'm going to put these like so just on the side. Making sure that they're parallel on both sides. It doesn't look uneven. Now there are optional extra stickers in every kit. There are white wing bars, uh, various heraldry designs. I'm going to leave this one fairly plain for now and move on to the next section. If you are putting these down over larger sections or more delicate sections, you can just use a dry brush and just pat the sticker down to the conform as it fits. Some of the kits, especially the First World War one, comes with rigging, which is the black thread provided. For this, you're going to need a needle. Um, thread your needle with the black thread as if you were sewing. And then from underneath, you'll see the outcut holes. This won't be the same in every model. And then just press your needle through out of the tissue very carefully pulling the thread all the way through follow the rigging diagram of which have a model you happen to be building very careful with this on this particular model should be able to see the rigging holes through the tissue. And just very, very carefully ease it along. Careful not to rip either the tissue or the balsa which it goes through. In this case, the Eindecker has holes here in the undercarriage to do rigging on the bottom, but I'm only going to rig it to the top. So, just want that distinctive Eindecker look to it, which does include a lot of rigging. So, 
just support that as it goes through and then always making sure that you're holding the tension rather than allowing the string to pull into the tissue. Once that's clear, just with both ends, tighten up on the bracing, obviously not too much, and then tight off underneath the wing or as the rigging diagram shows you to do. And then trim away the excess once you've got your rigging in place and um, just touch a tiny little dab of super glue onto the ends of the string and where it passes through just to give it a little bit more strength and stop it fraying or pulling out and that is a completed iron decker which is covered in its accessories the tissue covering the stickers painting and rigging now for balancing you're going to want to put a little bit of weight in the nose the best thing on a model of this size which is very small and a little bit of blue tack inside of there you can of course use lead shot or something you want to balance the model just inside of the wing support there to give you just the right flight this one's much more for display though as i put all of the rigging in and delicate parts are included and i've only given it one coat of depth thank you very much for watching henson's flying machines that is the covering video and finishing video happy building